Howdy, it is I, Junk, back with you on a Saturday. I've had a rough week, I hope yours has been better than mine, but to be honest, it wouldn't be much harder to beat mine, so you've almost certainly done that. And the hangar we're looking at is not strictly exactly what I want to show you. I've got some games that I've been playing with an all-angler hangar, because somebody, and I'm forgetting who, please let me know in the comments, suggested an all-angler hangar, because that was their dream hangar, and uh, I, I did that. The one downside here is I had to use two of the limited edition anglers because those are the five anglers that I have. Uh, and yeah, it, it was... I mean, we'll, we'll talk about the games as, as we're watching them, but it was kind of what you'd think in that you have a lot of tools because you always have the option to just dip out. <laughs> and that gives you great mobility and great great, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one engagements. But you're also boxed in a little bit, as as you would be with any with any hangar using all five of the same robots. You have a particular set of skills, right? <laughs> but you don't have skills beyond that, and you will certainly come to miss the ones you don't have. I missed my behemoth so very, very much. So very, very much. Uh, let's actually talk about about the behemoth for a minute because I've seen I watched the predator video with the new robot the new robot is always in stealth it's got four heavies just like the behemoth it's always in stealth until it comes out to fire or uses its ability which gives it 125 percent bonus damage so very strong the permanent stealth obviously a very big tool and the downside is it has under 200,000 health what that's going to look like when you get out there with all of the mods, uh, I don't know off the top of my head, but it's still going to be relatively you know, fragile compared to uh, an actual behemoth. As you probably know, I'm a behemoth en enthusiast. I actually have, I think I have six Mark III behemoths now, and I'm not really concerned about the new robot for two reasons. One is obviously the health is, is very fragile. It, it reminds me a little bit of the Erebus because they released a robot that should be great on paper. Three heavies is still, to this day, a ton of firepower. Uh, the built-in shield is really strong, and, you know, uh, we've seen you can make it regenerate pretty well. But it's so fragile underneath it, and they released it in an era when Shield Breaker was common. You had to have Shield Breaker because shield breaker there were so many shields. So it ended up being meaningless to the meta, just about. Like, the Erebus came and died immediately. Well, they're releasing a robot that's in permanent stealth in an era where stealth is now the most common mechanic you're going to run into. <laughs> Whether it's on the Emuji or it's just so somebody uh, running Beak drones, you run into a lot of stealth, and Beak is probably the most common drone you're going to run into. So they're releasing a fragile robot with a mechanic in, into a meta where defeating that mechanic is built into the meta just about. So... I'm not overwhelmingly concerned about it. I am going to try it and run it. I mean, I, I don't like the chicken legs. <laughs> you know how I feel about, about chicken robots. So this, this may be the ground chicken. But also, you know, I've got to try it because I've got so many behemoth loadouts. I, <laughs> like, I've got every weapon in the game just about that you could put on, on a four heavy robot. So with that many options, I have to try them. Oh, yeah. And that shell titan? I don't know, man. <laughs> Gonna have to see some more video of that. But anyway, let's talk about the anglers here for a minute. There's a weird thing about the angler that I noticed, and I've put in a ticket asking what's going on. We talked about it on the forum. But if you look at the angler, I think this one has one. Yeah. Up here, we have the Wonder Worker skill. Upon activating its ability, Angler immediately repairs a portion of its maximum durability. Okay. Neat, right? That's a pretty good skill on a tank. You would want something like that. And then, you look over here. Now, we don't have Wonder Worker, right? So, let's say I want to replace Mechanic with Wonder Worker, which would be a logical thing, because Wonder Worker is way better than Mechanic in basically every situation. And there's no Wonder Worker. They took Wonder Worker out. Didn't say anything about it. 
Is it a stealth nerf? I don't know, because it might just be a correction in that it's not exactly clear that Angler actually benefits from Wonder Worker. Here's the thing. If you go back into the Wonder Worker ability, right? Upon activating its ability, Angler immediately repairs a portion of its maximum durability. The magic four words there are upon activating its ability. Well, upon activating its ability, electric shift here, you enter phase shift. Phase shift is something that prevents you from taking damage. And the way healing works in war robots is that it's treated as negative damage. Well, <laughs> if you enter a, a state where you cannot be damaged, then you cannot be healed. So in essence, Wonder Worker may have never worked. And it could just be that it's not something I noticed personally before, because I would always run phase shift and glider. So I would get heals and didn't parse through more carefully how and when. Also, I've noticed when I north light in stealth, and there's reasons to do that sometimes if you want the gravity amp or you just want the shield, I'll get the shield, but I won't get the heal. The other place in the game where this weird thing about healing is negative damage, the other place this came up was in the reworking of Last Stand. Because Last Stand used to make you immune to damage, and then people didn't like that it made you immune to healing. So then they reworked Last Stand to just give you something like, you know, 999 resistance. So you can heal when you're in Last Stand. The flip side was that since a fully level Titan weapon bypasses resistance, it meant Last Stand let you heal when you were being shot by normal by normal robots, but didn't prevent Titans from one-shotting you. So the loadouts I had for these things, I had the three of the three you're seeing here, the uh, Nucleon Quarkers, which every time I put Nucleon or Quarker on something, I always like it better than I thought I would, and I remember that, and I still like it better than I thought I would. It was a really it was a really nice combo of a little bit of range, because I think the range is, what, 500 technically? Yeah, 500. You, you get a little bit of range, but up close, the constant firing, you, the loss of accuracy really doesn't matter when you're right in front of something. So it's, it's a really nice combination of you can be, you, you have a little bit of a ranged game, you know, c close, medium range, and then you've actually got constant damage up close, which makes it a, a really substantial threat. Uh, this is what I've always run, right? The, the difference here is I took off the glider and added a quantum radar. So, I mean, I wanted to lose the phase shift because I wanted to put on more quantum radar because I'm seeing so much so much uh, stealth. And so I put on the armadillo to see how that would go. But other than that, yeah, the, the spear redeemer, it is a mixed range thing, but the it ends up playing very similar to kind of like the Nucleon in that you've got a little bit of range because of the spears, but really up close is where you're most devastating. And, and honestly, with an angler, how far do you, away do you want to be? Well, the last angler challenges that notion. <laughs> the the uh, rotating laser <laughs> angler. I do have the new pilot. I just haven't, I haven't leveled him. I'm waiting for an event. As you can see, I'm a little gold poor right now, so... I've got like four pilots I want because I've got two of the Ares pilots I want to level two and run two of those new Ares pilots at the same time, but that's gonna take between that and the and the laser pilot for this, it's gonna take like 120 thousand gold. So let's wait for an event, shall we? Uh, the last two anglers, which I've taken apart mostly already, but I can show you the pilots at least and, and tell you what they were. This one. I pr I'm pretty sure... See, there's, no, there's another Wonder Worker here. I'm pretty sure that this one I was running, like, traditional, like, Claw and Talon. The most traditional kind of angler. And, yeah, with with repair. And I'm pretty sure I had another Armadillo on this as the... as the uh, drone. And then the last angler... Yeah, was a slight variation. It was it was the spear build, but instead of using the redeemer, I put I put a decay on it, and I didn't feel any differently about it. Like I didn't feel better or worse the, having the having that extra what is it two hundred and fifty meters of range in the heavy weapon didn't change the play style because you know with an angler again 
are, are you going to camp? Obviously, I did with one. I mean, really, the only reason I made the laser angler originally was that if <laughs> if I can't run the behemoth, I need something to fill that behemoth role. And if I have to run five anglers, I'm just going to run one of those. So so that was my uh, my five angler experiment. And let's take a look. I can tell you just overall, my my big takeaway was... I didn't feel any more powerful than, than anything else. It was like, you would think that running five anglers, you, you would feel like a God. And I did not feel like a God. <laughs> I felt very fragile a lot of the time. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. I guess one more thing to mention is the Indra in the back. This, this build has just been taking over champion league. Not this, not the, uh, the mods, but just the new weapons on the Indra. And I don't, totally know why i mean i understand the high level concept these weapons do a lot of damage and the indra is more evasive so yeah yeah yada 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 but you you would think there would be counters to that we we had figured out the indra right we all faced five indras a game six indras a game for two three months at one point and then it got replaced with the new hotness i guess maybe that it's just a way of of count I mean it counters anglers and it gives you something to do if if you end up with the aether shooting at you you can maybe phase out of it and get closer I I don't I honestly don't totally know why these are the these are the mods I'm going with for it I don't know that these are the right ones and I, I really haven't had a game where it's had a chance to shine but let's uh, watch a game and and we'll see where we're at All right, we're gonna drop in here on the valley. I'm gonna drop in first the new laser angler, and my thought at this pro my thought process right now is just let's get over to that hill and shoot across to the other one. Why? Well, if I was running the behemoth, which is I would normally be doing, I would drop the behemoth and try to get over there and do the same thing, try to get some cheap kills. And you'll be able to see pretty quickly here why I've switched to the quantum radar on a lot of these builds. There's so many bots running stealth or running the beak drone or having stealth as their ability like the Emuji or the Raven Pilot, which we've got one of those down there. There's three bots down there that are, you know, messing with stealth at, at various stages. And the Raven Pilot is going to experience the downside of the popularity of a mechanism. When it becomes popular, the counterplay also becomes popular. And so it is with stealth. Now, you can imagine my emotional <laughs> roller coaster being shot by a behemoth when I'm supposed to be in the behemoth. But since this is an all angler run, womp womp for me. Next up, we have this limited edition angler with the most traditional angler loadout, the Claw Talon. Uh, the, it is still bugged, although compared to the Arden Demuji, it's, it's not bugged. <laughs> the Arden Demuji is, is like 10 times more bugged than the angler. Doesn't, that doesn't make it right. It just means that when you only have five angles, you run two bug ones. Yeah, I could tell I was getting torn up. I thought, all right, maybe I can get in and do some damage to this behemoth. And I just get completely chewed up. You can see the claw Kepri there. The claw nerf is not going to hurt the claw. 15% damage reduction doesn't really matter. The claw's damage is about its, its effect accumulation. And they didn't mess with, the, mess with the effect accumulation. So if you get rusted up, and you've got 75 stacks of rust or whatever, you're going to get torn up regardless of whether there's a 15% damage nerf because the, the damage multiplier is going to eat up that nerf anyway. The spear nerf, it's, it's a 25% damage reduction over time. The second shot hits more, third shot hits less. It's 25% 25, 25 net reduction. That hurts, but I, I, even though I run a ton of spears, that's probably right because the spear was more powerful in my experience than some medium weapons. And anytime you have... There's times when I wanted to run the Typhon with Spear. That's not good. <laughs> so here we have Spear versus Spear. And I'm hoping the Redeemer helps me win out. But I'm not eager to go get torn up by that Behemoth again. So I'm going to come back inside. See what damage I can do from a little bit of cover. Now I know from being in that position where that Behemoth is. You can shoot down into this area. Yeah, like so I, 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 I did expect that. I thought maybe I could make this trade work, and I think I ultimately did. I didn't get him all the way, but he got taken out by someone else. A little defense of center now. 
And uh, yeah, there's not a lot you're going to do in a damaged bot when the Aether starts shooting down on you. So looking at the map and looking at the beacon bar, I'm like, eh, I don't know. This Quarker Nucleon build, I really like it. I, I, I've said before, I'm always surprised at how much I like the Quarker Nucleon builds. No one expects the Fafnir. That's its great strength. <laughs> I mean, we know what to do when we see it, but we don't expect to see it. So It's not the strongest, obviously, but God bless the people who can make it effective and keep it viable. Anything, anytime you can make an older robot feel good about itself. That was a little bit of a, a little bit of a burn. Yeah, I'm, I'm running one, uh, one immunity amp on this build, and the immunity amp, I don't know, it, I like the, the health, I like the speed. Even on an angler, I feel like it doesn't get loaded up fast enough. And this guy gets saved by the bell. <laughs> Cruelly denied what would have been easy pickings. So let's take a look at the scoreboard here. First place, but only three kills for beacons. You can see the guy in the behemoth with the nine kills there. That's supposed to be me, sitting there, holding on a button, not running. But let's go take a look at another game with these guys and see how we do. All right, now we're going to drop into Canyon. Only one bot for the job in Canyon, and that's got to be my, my laser bot here. I'm playing it just like I would the behemoth, try to go to a little vantage point and make them pay for trying to get away. Now this was, I hadn't switched in the quantum radar yet, so I'm a little bit under-equipped. Yeah, there's a couple little changes. I switched some of the drones too. Not this one, but some of the other drones. So I'm at the mercy of stealth. Yeah, and, and while I'm at this moment, I'm just frustrated that this does not do as much damage as a, damage as a behemoth at this range. Did you know that? <laughs> Did you know that that three light weapons and a heavy are not as strong as four heavy weapons? It's like, you're going to want to write that down. But I, I do feel like, even though I'm not getting a lot of damage out there, I feel like I'm controlling the battlefield at this point. And that I, this is like, as an area denial exercise, I've put... A lot of people in a position where they can't move freely and that is a huge advantage in in any war robots game a very brave <laughs> a very brave scorpion I'm not sure he knew what he was teleporting to <laughs> but I'm, I'm gonna go snuggle the angler not generally the right strat and I jump down now because you know we've got four beacons I feel like They've got scorpions coming at me. They've sort of figured out what they're going to do. I may as well at least try to defend this beacon. Even though I knew, realistically speaking, I could not do that with those weapons in that build. But this one might have better luck. The old, the old traditional build. Yeah, I, I can tell that Havoc's sort of thinking this through. Like, eh, do I back up? Do I try to keep going? I think he's, he's decided... This is probably a death pact, but I'll, I'll keep dancing. And he's probably right. It's going to be a death pact. But under the circumstances, I don't disagree with him. You know, running away would have left you in a half-damaged robot with short-range weapons and no way to get into a short-range fight without crossing over some, some uh, controlled areas. So I, I think that was probably... I mean, I think I would have made the same choice. It, it's rough because you know you're, you're going to stay there and, and get your robot blown up, but... I, th I think that was the move. And I'm kind of in a similar situation right now. I have no hope of actually taking out any of these guys. But if I can make them turn around and, like, spend more time on their beacon instead of trying to get another one, if I can keep them at beacon A and contain them, the longer they're spending on one beacon, the more clicks we get of the beacon bar. By the way, did you know, if you read the description of the, the beacon modes in the in the battle screen, like when you're choosing the mode you want to be in, it describes the beacon bar as being filled with tickets. And when your team runs out of tickets, you lose. Have you ever heard anyone describe those as tickets? 
when have they always been tickets and nobody ever read the screen? I don't know. I'm not going to start though. I'm not going to be that guy. So since they were so well contained, I thought we'd go get some fish in the barrel. But uh, yeah, this is uh, not really where I want to be standing. So I took the aether out precisely because I just felt like I was getting a few good shots in, but wherever I landed, there was somebody to take me out. Of course, I'm, I'm going to miss it when I see, like, the Miramets here, but... Yeah, and my thought again here, at this point, I'm not trying to necessarily take them out with damage. I just need to keep them shooting at me and not going for beacons, and that's all it really took. Once again, not setting the world on fire here. Third place, even, so. Uh, but hey, only one beacon. That's on brand for me. <laughs> and the rest of the team, just about. Uh, so yeah, that is my short experiment here with all anglers. You know, somebody better could have done a better job, I'm sure. I think one of the downsides is, is I built them almost all as tanks, except for the the ranged laser one I gave some nuke amps to. But everything else got two repair amps, one immune amp. That's just, you know, that's how I like to play. I like to play with durability. So let me know if you think I should do this again with more nuke amps. I, I, I don't like to do it too much because it feels, I mean, it's kind of boring, you know, half the excitement. It's one, you know, it's good to, to take out your opponent, but if you can do it in something ridiculous and just make them feel really silly, <laughs> it's way more fun. So thank you for watching to the end of this video. If you're a dog or cat at home alone, I'm sure that your parents are going to come back very soon and have a treat for you. And I'll talk to you again really soon. Later.